Welcome everyone to today's City Club Forum. My name is Ralph Delarada, and I have the pleasure this year of serving as your president of the City Club of Cleveland. As many of you know, the City Club of Cleveland was established almost 100 years ago, in October of 1912. And during these, these times, the City Club has served as one of the nation's premier public podiums for civic dialogue, truly covering the most important topics of our time. We're fortunate to draw our guest speakers from a variety of fields and backgrounds, <coughs> providing a nas national forum of free speech, something I know all of us here hold dear. These speakers are rich in experience and knowledge and are here to spur discussion and learning, not only amongst the citizens of Cleveland, but to our broader national audience. Today, I have the great pleasure of introducing a true humanitarian who truly has risked everything in his selfless quest to help those who need it. Our guest, James Orbinski, is a medical doctor who has helped countless people throughout the, his years of field work in developing countries and with the organizations he has created and led. Dr. Orbinski gained much of his leadership and field experience while he was with Médecins Sans Frontières, c'est le mot, les mots en français, n'est-ce pas? Or Doctors Without Borders. He has represented the medical humanitarian organization during numerous humanitarian emergencies, <coughs> spanning the refugee crisis in Zaire, the Rwandan genocide, and the civil war and famine in Somalia, not to mention missions in Peru, Afghanistan, the Sudan, Kosovo, Russia, Cambodia, South Africa, India, and Thailand. He has also represented the organization at several United Nations bodies and in many national parliaments. At Doctors Without Borders, Dr. Orbinski served at many positions, including medical coordinator, head of mission, international president, and chair of the Neglected Diseases Working Group, through which he created the Drugs for Neglected Diseases Initiative in 2003. This initiative develops drugs and other health technologies for diseases largely neglected by profit-driven research and development companies. As international president, Dr. Urbinski accepted the Nobel Peace Prize, the Nobel Peace Prize, on behalf of Médecins Sans Frontières in 1999 for its pioneering approach to medical humanitarianism and for its position on witnessing and war-torn and poverty-stricken regions. Dr. Orbinski became a research scientist at St. Michael's Hospital in 2003 and an associate professor of medicine and political science at the University of Toronto in 2005. He founded Dignitas International in 2004, which is an organization that works in Malawi with the Ministry of Health and Communities to now manage the health care of more than 12,000 HIV-positive people. Dr. Orbinski was the focus of a documentary film. This film is on humanitarianism, and it screened at the 2008 Sundance Film Festival entitled Triage, Dr. James Orbinski's Humanitarian Dilemma. His best-selling book, An Imperfect Offering, Humanitarianism in the 21st Century, was released in Canada and internationally in 2008. He has also co-authored a paper on HIV, uh, AIDS, treatment adherence that was cited by former President Bill Clinton as the nail in the coffin on discrimination in Africa and was recognized by The Lancet as one of the world's top 20 medical research papers of all in 2006. Dr. Urbinski is a founding board member of the Global Alliance for TB Drug Development, the Stephen Lewis Foundation, and Canadian Doctors for Medicare. He is board chair of War Child Canada and Dignitas International, as well as a founding editorial board member for the online medical journals Open Medicine and Conflict in Health. Dr. Urbinski currently lives in Toronto with his partner and their three children. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how he finds the time to do it, but it is a pleasure, it is a pleasure for everyone here, for me to introduce such a widely respected altruistic leader. Please join me in welcoming Dr. James Urbinski to the City Club of Cleveland. Well, I have to say that uh, it's colder in Cleveland than it is in Toronto. 
but it's still very much a delight to be here. And I'd like to uh, thank you, Ralph, for a, a very generous and kind introduction. I'd also like to thank uh, Earl Pike and Jason uh, Weiner and all at the AIDS uh, Task Force Alliance of Greater Cleveland for uh, arranging to, for me to be here today and for their very generous and warm uh, welcome over the last couple of days. I have to say that uh, it's uh, very much uh, a pleasure and a, an honor and a privilege uh, for me to uh, speak here at the City Club. And um, uh, it is, as you well know, uh, America's long, longest standing citadel uh, of free speech. And I will speak very freely uh, here today, uh, I assure you. Uh, but let me also note that uh, I speak for myself, and I don't speak for any organization or institution that I have been or that I am uh, affiliated with. Now, I've worked internationally for some 20 years in many parts of the world as a doctor, and now I work both in Canada uh, and in Malawi. And I want to speak uh, today about global health, and I also want to speak about justice. But I do not want to speak broadly but I want to speak very specifically uh, about genocide, about AIDS, uh, and about climate change. And in these, I will explore some very broad principles, and namely the central importance of dignity, the central importance of voice, and the necessity of a particular kind of humanitarianism, and the necessity of a particular kind of politics. But most of all, I want to talk about hope, and hope that lies in the balance, not just for the world out there beyond our borders, but for all of us. And hope is about possibility. And where there's no possibility, there's no hope. But where there is possibility, there is hope. Now let me begin by noting uh, that politics is an imperfect project, except when we believe the delusion uh, that it is perfect. And this, in fact, uh, if you'll forgive the colloquialism, is when politics is least perfect. Now, in Rwanda in 1994, I was uh, Doctors Without Borders head of mission in Kigali, which, was the, which is the, ca uh, the country's capital city. And I was there as a humanitarian doctor. And it was a place with a very particular politics. It was the criminal politics of genocide. And it was a brutal and horrible time and it was a place of rational and state-planned evil. One million people, virtually all of them Tutsis, were butchered in 14 short weeks. And bodies filled the streets of the capital city, and the gutters alongside a hospital that we managed to keep open literally ran red with blood. And one night, after many long hours of surgery, a girl of about nine told me how she escaped murder at the hands of the Interahamwe killing squads. And the squads were part of an organized government plan to erase the existence of the Tutsi people from Rwanda. Now, through an interpreter, the little girl told me, and I quote, my mother hid me in the latrine. I saw through the hole. I watched them hit her with machetes. I watched my mother's arm fall into my father's blood on the floor and I cried without noise in the toilet. Now throughout the country, parents often paid to have their children shot in open pit latrines, rather than to see them murdered by being hacked to death with a machete. Now for years before the genocide, the French government trained and armed the Rwandan soldiers. And all the way through the genocide, the French government supplied them with arms, with mercenaries, and with military intelligence. Médecins Sans Frontières, or Doctors Without Borders, and other non-government organizations repeatedly called for a massive UN military intervention to stop the genocide. 